express my uh, compliment to some city employees that did a great job this week, or that I saw doing a great job this week. Uh, Mr. Zolstra made himself available to me for uh, for a few questions concerning the water, and I appreciate that time, his time. I also want to pass on to Officer Clevenger, that he did a great job uh, with the Nancy Kelly incident, and if you could pass that on to him. And to uh, Leah Brewer, in her contact, she had to deal with a um, difficult situation, and she did a very professional job. And I to you. I'd appreciate it if you could pass that on. Thank you. I yield back my time. Jerry Shorey. Oops, sorry. Jane Zappa. Oh. <laughs> uh, Jane Zappa, 76350 Garden Road. Yeah. Uh, I've been concerned about the city council's lack of knowledge of the operating instructions that the law requires you use Robert's Rules of Order. Better or worse, the state of Oregon says you have to use a parliamentary procedure. You don't have to use Roberts, but we voted, the city voted, to install this. And I'm amazed and appalled that people who lack, not all of you, but most of you don't know how to make a proper motion, don't know what a reconsideration is, don't know what a rescind is, don't know what a, how to make a friendly am uh, amendment. These are operating instructions to that thing right in front of you called an agenda. This book also relates to your order of business, how you handle things. It's big, it's thick. But don't be afraid of it. It can bury you in minutiae, but we don't usually get into that much that much stuff. So it's not a hard book. It's only ten dollars, and I would ask that man there to buy you a copy of this book so you can look at it. There's even little cheater books like the like right here <laughs> that cover most of the simple things you people will use. And you know, when you get stuck, then it's time to go to the big book. But if you don't know how to operate this book, you can't operate the city. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Mary Shorey. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I stand this evening because I'm appalled at the things that are taking place in the city, city government. I have a large and long history in this city and I've invested a lot of time. I hate to see it trashed. <coughs> My history in city government is uh, four years on the city council in the 70s, six years in the city council in the 80s, mayor for two years, fire chief for two years, three years, um, paramedic firefighter. A lot, of a lot of time invested in this because I believe in the people and in the city. I was on the council when the council melted down, or when the city melted down in 2011, 2012, at the financial thing. Some of the reasons for that was failure of council oversight, too many employees, there were 10 laid off at the time, financial mismanagement, lack of community support, lack of transparencies, and that plays into pretty much what we're doing now. <coughs> the current situation is loss of community support, loss of credibility from the city council and the city administrator. People working outside their job descriptions, loss of credibility, sounds familiar. Citizen trust, 
lack of administrator oversight, failure to follow city, the city's charter. However, in the last couple of years, or at least a few, the last few years, we established a, community, a municipal court, improved city related community relations. When I was mayor, my biggest thrust was the community, the, the citizens. What they wanted, they got. Whether I wanted them or not. The uh, the thing about that sort of thing is that's how you establish trust. If they don't believe you, then forget suggestions for the community for what I would suggest for the current situation, improve community relations. I would, I would recommend a citizen's advi ad hoc advisory committee for the council and the city. When uh, things cool down, the ad hoc committee goes away. Increase transparency from the council and the city. You can see from a number of people here tonight, when we were going through our meltdown, we held our meetings in this high school auditorium to give people more room and we and we had town hall meetings. I don't know if we've had a town hall meeting in the last three years at least. And uh, those were kind of interesting to say the least from the, for the council because uh, there were no, basically no holes barred and people could say what they wanted within reason. I didn't know why I called the mayor a Nazi, but that, that was a little out of control. But, uh, but we didn't we didn't uh, restrict what they were talking about. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Only one other thing. I'd like to see less confrontation of, from both both sides of, of the coin. Thank you very much. PO Box 122 Oak Ridge. In regards to the minutes from the last meeting, and on page two and the top of page three. And it says, Susan said the matter of independent contractor's contract that was sent to Brenda Wilson at Elcog by the former mayor in January and asked her to comment on it. And she too agreed that MBHC, which I'm assuming is Michael B. Hansen Consulting, was an independent consultant. She said this was not done by our attorney. And Susan said she is speaking. Oh, I was in conflict with Kathy at that time. Uh, it was sent to Brenda in January. This was done without the council's knowledge and without staff's knowledge, although it was the staff's knowledge now. So how is it the staff's knowledge now? So obviously you've looked at my private emails that I neglected to close out on my desktop computer in my office when I was the mayor. Um, Brenda Wilson is a personal friend of mine, and it was not something that was done, you know, underhandedly. It was something that I was asking an opinion of a friend who happens to be an attorney, but also the director of Alcott. And I just find it, you know, it may not be illegal to look at my personal emails, but I find it to be highly unethical. Uh, you know, the only time I ever discussed things with Brenda Wilson was on my personal email, because again, we're friends. So, you know, I understand that everything on the mayor email is open but when you start attacking my personal email, I have a problem with that. So, and she offered an opinion. She did not make a decision. She's not a judge. She's not, you know, she, she wasn't asked by the city. She was asked by a friend to offer an opinion, which she did. Dennis Patterson. Dennis Patterson. 47871 West 1st Street. That address in and of itself is unimportant. The fact that I live one block west of the high school is, however, will become apparent in a minute. I noticed on the agenda that uh, one of the items tonight is water quality testing. I assume that's going to refer to testing the water at the wellhead. And somebody's bound to say, well, that's all that's legally required, so that's all we're going to do. I would suggest a more accurate test of what people are getting out of their faucets would be to pick half a dozen homes at random spaced around the city and go test the water that comes out of their faucets and see 
whether we're getting contamination from a well or from a holding tank or from a delivery main, something like that. At the bare minimum, I would hope that they would test the water that comes out of the drinking fountains at the high school and at the elementary school. Like I said, I just live one block west of the high school. And on my side of the street, on my block, there's only seven houses. Four of them have cancer, including my wife. In fact, we bought our house from the estate of a guy who died from cancer in our house. So I figure four out of seven is an awful high incidence of cancer. And I would suggest that my proximity to the high school is any indication that there may be something carcinogenic in the water for the high school. So I would hope that if we can at least provide safe water for the entire citizenry, we should at least provide it for the children and grandchildren of the staff. Thank you. Lauren Cobb? Oh, yes. Uh, I um, on, on August 11th, we're having the Cask Cave, Keg and Cask Festival uptown. It is a primary supporter of the food bank for the, for the city. And uh, even though we uh, go on from 3 p.m. till 11 p.m. this year, I would like to ask help with a volunteer force. The volunteer force would be to help set up fencing, tables, chairs, canopies. Enjoy yourselves at the festival. At the end, take down so we can get the street cleared of you know, any debris and everything by that time. And if you could help out, it would very much be appreciated and the food bank would be very appreciative too. Water testing at what is called point of use. The National Primary Endowment Act does say Water will be tested at point of use, drinking fountains, what have you. Too many times point of use proves false negative. Uh, let's say your kitchen sink, you wash your dishes, piece of food scrap gets caught up in your screen. That can decay, you can draw water off of that and get a false negative because it's coming from your plumbing and not from being delivered. So this Testing point of use is very fine, but try very strict measures in doing it. And it is required. <coughs> Who do we contact if we want to volunteer? I'm sorry. Oh. Where are you? Okay. Jim, you mentioned that you had an opinion from a friend with regard to something, but you didn't specify what, and what was the opinion, if you feel like you can share it. Yeah, I asked uh, the question as far as the definition from what I was hearing from people, is that there's a real fine line between what is determined as an employee and what is determined as a contractor. And there are several cities in the, in the state that are being sued by the government because they've done this to avoid paying PERS and workman's comp and benefits. So my concern was that where are we at on this line, I was being assured by Louis that we were fine. So I asked a friend of mine who just happened to be the lead attorney for PERS before she became director of LCOG what her opinion was. And she determined that it sounded like he was definitely a contractor and not an employee. That was one opinion. The other is, and that was based on the definitions that the state requires or puts forth. So out of that, I took it and went back to Louie and said, you know, this is very gray here. We're going to get into trouble because we are liable for all that back comp, all that back purrs, any back expenses if it's determined that we're in violation. So I'm very concerned about that. So that's why I went to her and asked her opinion. Again, being a PERS lead attorney, figured she would know what the definition is. And she supplied that to me. 
So it wasn't, and I did go to Louie with this, and he assured me that we were fine. So. So the only thing I'd like to say to you is no one touched your private email. That's the only way you could have gotten that information. If you say so. Well, I'm just telling you, it's the only way it comes through. She and I only converse via my personal email and not the city email. So that's the only way it came through. I'd also like to add something to the agenda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I'd like to have further discussion of an evaluation um, assessment of the administrative an administrative review. Um, we began that discussion last week. that as an email sometime ago and I think mm -hmm. it came from it came from Susan. Would you elaborate on what that discussion was about? Yeah. First one and they first contacted the city. Because we can't hear you. Yeah. First contacted the city because they had received um, a phone call asking about Michael uh, rehousing and whether or not he was independent contractor. 
the first person asked me some questions. I answered her questions, and she was satisfied that um, he was an independent contractor. And that was pretty much the end of this discussion. The email was sent out because there was a lot of discussion going around, and it was just sent out for a heads up to all of you that, that someone had contacted PERS, PERS contacted us, I answered the questions, and they were satisfied with those answers. Okay, thank you. 